Hi everybody, I'm Mary Golick. I'm one of the resident artists at Greenbelt. Um, we're based in the community center on the third floor. So once the pandemic is over, come and see us. Um, I don't know that we have anybody actually on yet. Do we do have yep. a couple? Yep. Great, welcome. Um, I thought today I would show you some of my new work and works in progress. So I'll take you through my studio space. The first part of my studio space is this long wall that has um, a lot of my art panels. I make individual tiles and I also make panels of tiles. So I wanted to start by showing just some of the new things that I have. This is a new piece, cottages, and this is done with a technique called sgraffito. So at one point, this whole thing was black and all the white that you see is where I pulled the black away. And that's the sgraffito technique. So you can get some fine textures and a lot of contrast with that. This is also sgraffito. And this time I decided these are fish in a stream with reeds. And I decided to make my own little teeny tiles and glaze them, which was a pain. And, um, but I liked the result of it going around as a hint of color and, and water. And this was inspired by a Tiffany uh, piece that I saw on an exhibit once. Uh, it wasn't ceramics or sgraffito, but I liked sort of the idea of the reeds and fish. Another new piece that I have is this one. It's called Discussion. And this is also a sgraffito technique. So all of the white was black and I, it got pulled away. Um, and I tinted some of the uh, panel also with underglazes to give just a hint of color. The frame was something I actually made in 2010 for another piece, but I hated the other piece, so I smashed it. But I kept <laughs> the frame and uh, thought about what, what else I could do with it and what I could make with it. And this is how, my final decision, uh, how it ended up. So sometimes art just takes years to do. Um, this piece is uh, not graffito. Ta-da! Um, <laughs> this is um, incised, and where you see the black outlines, it's carved, and I wiped a black underglaze in there. And the reason I do that, one is to give definition, but two, to keep a buffer between the two glazes. Otherwise, they bleed into each other. Um, the, this decoration on the back is actually multiple coats of underglazed dots. There's probably four or five coats on each dot to actually raise it up and give it some dimension. And of course, a little underglazed spider there showing through the celadon. And again, this, this year I was experimenting a little bit with um, embellishing my panels with small handmade tiles. And uh, they were a challenge, um, but I learned a lot doing it. It was, it was how to mount them, and um, I ended up having to glue all these on a fiberglass mesh screen and then mount it into the cement so that I wasn't going like that with every single tile. Um, Another new piece is this one um, that's inspired by Asian text textiles and boxes. And uh, one thing I tried on this piece was to cut out the edges of the tile to, so that, that the, when the grout went in there, it would make its own design. And then when I finished grouting it, I painted it with a metallic copper to, to go with this orange that's here and give it a little bit of luster. Sort of looked sort of like metal hinges. Um, You're getting a lot of compliments on all of these. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, this is another new panel, and uh, this has a variety of techniques in it. The birds, if you, I don't know, Gina, if you could get a side shot, the birds are actually relief 
they are applied and they stick up about an eighth of an inch. And then the bird here was, was graffito. The black was black underglaze. The white was pulled away. And the white, it was also white here, but then I added glazes to um, give a little bit more dimension. The background is done with, it's a, a very refined form of slip trailing. It's called tube lining. And liquefied clay is shot out of a needle that's so small, you can't even get a, a pin in it. That's how small it is. And so I, I uh, applied this uh, decoration, which is also three-dimensional. It, it, it has a texture to it. And then I made the, the frame to, to go with that. Uh, I, when possible, I like to mess around with um, arches or other shapes to a frame. Um, I think it helps to give a little bit of interest. Um, there's lots of work in here, and someday when you guys can come and actually see me in person, I showed you some of it during the last couple of tours. So I wanna just move down to these three, which are also new. This is done with under glazes, and it's um, an abstract meadow. This Queen Anne's lace here has little teeny dots of white under glaze. Each one of those took four coats. So you can see it's rather labor intensive. Um, in the frame, these polka dots were inspired by the storage box that I had the, these uh, panel pieces stored in. There were some purple polka dots and it looked really good with these. So I thought, hey, you know, let's add this to the frame. So I actually made these polka dots by sticking my finger in the glaze jar and making polka dots. But there's two or three different layers of different colors of underglaze, which is why they're modeled a little bit. Uh, this is another underglaze piece, and this was done with paper resist. So there were little pieces of paper that went over yellow, and then when I painted the green on over it, I pulled the paper back up, and you get a very pristine shape that way. It's a very different look from what you can get with a brush. And the same with these flowers and the leaves. And the picket fence was done that way too. Um, this is another underglaze panel of tulips in a field, and these tulips I uh, printed with newsprint. I paint, actually painted the underglaze on the newsprint and placed it onto the clay, and it transferred. And uh, so that was a, a, yet another technique. Uh, that I use. So those are some of the new panels that I have for 2021. Um, I want to take you over to the section of my, this is, by the way, this is my area for glazing. This is um, where I, I sit to do all my glazing. And I, these are all my test tiles. So I have hundreds and hundreds of little tiles that test different glazes and glaze combinations so that I don't ruin my piece. So I, I might do, I've been known to do as many as 50 tests to do a piece um, to make sure that those colors and those glazes are doing what I want them to. Um, over here is a new piece. This is an individual tile and it's made by piecing together bits of clay. Um, so there's not a base, there's not a, you know, a background to this. You can see through it. And uh, it's, it's uh, called pieced tiles. And the trick to it is to design your design so that everything is connected so it doesn't fall apart. Hmm. <laughs> um, this is a piece that's new and this is more of an etching type approach. So the clay is carved with very fine lines like you were etching a copper plate. And after it is bisque fired, then I wipe red iron oxide, which is not a glaze, it's, um, it's a, like rust, liquid rust. 
and I wipe it on and wipe it off and it goes into all the little places that are carved but it comes off the other areas and then I added tints of underglaze just to give it a sort of a hand tinted sepia effect this is another example of the etching technique uh, and again these are various colors of oxides uh, that are in here and and the green is a little bit of underglaze that's diluted and and added just to give a hint of color uh, this I don't know if I like yet I'm thinking about it it's a uh, it's an, another abstract with underglazes um, but these flowers here were made with a sprig mold it's a little mold that I made out of clay and then I can punch clay into it and pop out a, a, a three-dimensional flower. And then I, I added that to the surface. Um, so it's quite busy, but very bright and colorful. Um, so That one could be a book cover. A book cover? <laughs> says Greenbelt Recreation Arts. <laughs> okay, be a heavy book cover. Um, oh, this is... Uh, the final panel that is new, and this one is done on red clay. Uh, it was an experiment with, with red clay. Didn't particularly like that kind of red clay because it, it warps and misshapes really easily. But it was fun to do, and uh, I love the color on the frame. That was very rich. Uh, so now I want to show you a couple of um, works in progress. So these are some fish and I actually made a template for the fish and cut out a bunch of them and glazed them and then I designed a frame to go around it so the frame has not yet been glazed um, but these inner parts will be a turquoise probably to go with this and then a darker outside these guys are four little turtles that I made and then I designed the panel around them. So these are cattails and, and uh, reeds to, to go with them. So I think I'm running out of time a little bit. 127. Uh, it's what? 127. 127, yeah. So I do want to take just a moment to uh, share that I am teaching a class this summer at the Greenbelt Community Center in making tiles and the various techniques that I use. And it's gonna be on Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings, 6.30 to 8.45. And it goes from June 30th to August 18th. Um, the beauty of this class is that it's part, it, it's a hybrid class. So part of it is for Zoom, people can be on Zoom and limited numbers of people can actually be in the classroom with me and those people can take turns each week. We have a limited number of people who can do that. But the beauty is that each week the class will be videoed and a link will be sent to students. So if you're on vacation for a week or two weeks, you can just tap into the video and not miss a class. How sweet is that? So think about, um, signing up to, to take that. I'd love to see you there. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this short tour.